that Zia Record Exchange here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was just in there picking up some stuff. It's a great shop. Been to the one in Arizona. This is the first time here. So without further ado, let's see what I got. and I went to Zia Records uh, not far from here I think it was on Eastern Avenue maybe um, I'd been to Zia in uh, Arizona in Mesa Arizona maybe two or three years ago really excellent selections huge place CDs vinyl uh, a lot of toys and stuff video games movies just you know whole like cornucopia of stuff spend your hard-earned dollars on I really like the selection the prices are really good they have all these um, different like bins set up like two for a dollar 99 cent CDs um, two dollar CDs three dollar CDs but they're just kind of like littered around the store there and you know you can't help but go digging through I found a couple of things in uh, in those bins as well but uh, like I said really excellent store if you're in Las Vegas and you want to go check out an excellent record store by all means go to Zia and now we're gonna to go to what I picked up from 1989 to get the Bodines at home and hey we didn't even show you the bag and how's about my uh, live studio audience today we've got a big live studio audience in there give it up everybody yeah they paid to sit in and watch this <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here's my, my bag, paid a dime for it, you know, a lot of stores now are kind of getting rid of uh, bags, so uh, if you're going to want one, you got to pay for it, uh, if I'd known that, I might have brought my own, um, and I also have a little lollipop that I got from Ike's Sandwiches, which is nearby where I ate my lunch afterwards, uh, they have a bunch of locations all over the place, I've been to the San Francisco one, Burbank, and now I've been to Las Vegas, and they always give you a little lollipop with your sandwich really good check them out uh, so anyways here we are going about the bow beans um, and some of these records I'm you know familiar with or whatever some of them I'm not I'm sort of familiar with this I don't think I have anything by the bow but I remember them I remember them having like one or two kind of alternative uh, radio hits or college rock hits the names of the songs are kind of slipping my memory, but I saw this and it was 99 cents. And I was like, you know, I remember kind of liking them, you know, when I heard some of their stuff on the radio. And again, I don't know if any of these tunes are the ones I'm thinking of, but you know, 99 cents, you know, how can you go wrong? You know, if there's one song on there, it was worth it, right? So I'm looking forward to checking out this Bodines and Home. I don't know if they're still around anymore. You know, um, you know, like I said, they were pretty popular with like college rock, alternative rock, but I'm not sure if they're still out there making music or touring anymore. I have to look that up. Next up from 2000, we have the Beautiful South and their album Painting It Red. Um, this band is made up of a couple of people from the House Martins, which is a band I, I really liked. Um, I have, I think, one or two CDs by The Beautiful South. I remember getting a song by them and really liking it, and then all of a sudden being in stores and seeing a CD by them and being like, ah, oh, let me check it out. And like I said, I think I have one or two, and, and I really liked them. So I saw this there, and this one was $3. Um, so I decided, let me uh, give it a, a whirl and see what I think. Um, but the funny thing is that, like, um, there's no information on the CD, like no copyright as to what year it's from. Um, so I had to look it up online, what year this came out. It said 2000, but apparently when this record came out, um, they had a lot of trouble promoting it. Uh, and I guess it didn't do as well maybe as previous the records um, because they just had issues promoting it. But then it also said that a bunch of the CDs were faulty. so. I don't know, I'm kind of wondering if this is going to be, uh, this record's going to be alright, or if I've got one of the faulty ones here, I don't know, but I'm not really sure what they meant by faulty, but I guess we'll uh, have to see, although this is used, so I mean, somebody had it at some point, but maybe they sold it to Zia because it was faulty, I don't know, but uh, looking forward to checking this one out, see what I think. 2018, we get 
Trevor Powers and his album Mulberry Violence. Uh, this was another $3 CD um, in, that I found in that bin. There's the CD there. It's almost like, I mean, I think it's just like an M and B, but it almost looks like Greek letters, sort of. You see on the cover on the back there. Um, so Trevor Powers, uh, I've talked about him before. He used to record under the name Youth Lagoon, kind of like electronica, like security thing. I stole it. You heard it here first. No, but um, he uh, recorded under the name Youth Lagoon, and for some reason, he decided to start using his real name. I don't know why. I mean, I'm sure he had a bit of a following as Youth Lagoon. I don't know why you'd suddenly want to change to Trevor Powers. Uh, I don't know if there were any issues with it or what, but because when he was recording as Youth Lagoon, it was still pretty much like a solo act. I mean, it was pretty much him doing everything. So it wasn't like a band split up and he decided to go solo or something. But uh, like I said, his uh, Youth Lagoon stuff's kind of like real chill, kind of mellow, like kind of electronica stuff. But I don't know what this is. Like, I don't know what kind of music this is. I don't know if when he stopped using Youth Lagoon and went to Trevor Powers, if he changed his style of music or if this is right in line with Youth Lagoon. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I don't know anything about this record. I just saw it there. I, the name jumped out at me because I remember mentioning it in a previous video. So. Uh, I just and it was three dollars, so I just decided to take a crack. So we'll see uh, see what we got here on uh, Mulberry Violence. 2021 brings us one of my favorite bands, The Descendants, and their new but old CD from this year called Ninth and Walnut. Um, Descendants, great Southern California punk band. I'm sure, a lot of you are familiar with them. So the deal with this record is, um, this is kind of referred to as like the great lost album. It's the lineup that recorded their, you know, seminal classic Milo Goes to College um, album. And this, are, you know, never was released. It's got 14 songs from 1977 to 1980 that make up this record that they recorded with that lineup. Tony Lombardo, Bill Stevenson, Milo Ackerman, and then Frank Nevetta, who was the guitarist who uh, passed away uh, a couple of years ago, unfortunately. And I don't know, I think maybe that was maybe part of the reason why they decided to put this out, you know, maybe just kind of also to honor his legacy with the band. Um, but I haven't heard any, I haven't heard anything from this yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I love this band. Uh, I've seen them live a handful of times and just really this this is actually like a CD this when I went to Zia today I was sort of like Maybe three things I was looking for hoping to pick up. This was one of them I got another one coming up and then one they didn't have um, But again, I love the descendants love their music and it'd be interesting to listen to this considering that it's you know new but not really new like stuff that was you know, recorded back in the day. Um, not too much. I'm surprised there isn't any, there's just lyrics in the book. I'm surprised they didn't do any kind of like anything inside the album about the guys kind of discussing it, you know. That would have been kind of cool just to see them each, maybe each, each of them, aside from Frank, you know, just uh, kind of writing a little something, their memory of this record or something, or these songs. 1985, we got Don Dixon. We've got some vinyl. I'm sure a bunch of you guys are happy to see some vinyl. So this record's got a really long title. Most of the girls like to dance, but only some of the boys like to. So, Don Dixon. I remember being in college, playing a tune from this record. I didn't. I don't. I didn't know who Don Dixon was. I may have heard the song and then saw that they had it at the college radio station to play, like a 45 or something. Um, I think, I don't think I just like put it on college radio, my college radio show and just been like, what's this? Let me play it. Um, so I think I had heard it, but I just remember playing this constantly on my college uh, radio show. Uh, the song called Praying Mantis. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, so that's my memory of this record. And, you know, I know he produced a bunch of stuff for other bands, um, had a really good career. I don't know if he's still doing that or not or whatever. I'm not really sure. Um, but I saw this there and it was cheap. Two, on sale, two ninety nine, 
And I was like, I love that song, Praying Mantis. So I was like, why not? You know, it's like kind of, I mean, it's like alternative, kind of rock, kind of pop, like really, pretty, I'm just basing this all on Praying Mantis, but very catchy, you know, hooks and lyrics and stuff. So I'd be curious to, again, to sort of take a listen to this to see how uh, the rest of it sounds. I didn't put the whole title on the uh, sleeve of the album, of course. It's too big. It looks good, condition. So it's funny, I, I, not something I was looking for or even had it on like the, my list of stuff that I'd want to pick up. But when I saw it, it just kind of made me go like, oh yeah, that would be kind of interesting because you know I'm not familiar with any of the other music or any of his other stuff. So it'll be kind of interesting to kind of check this out and, uh, you know, Maybe I've got a whole brand new favorite record of all time. You never know. It's possible. It's possible. In 1980, we get The Sounds of Asbury Park. I know nothing about this album. Um, I'm from the, near Asbury Park, and I've certainly spent a lot of time in Asbury Park. A lot of you are familiar with Asbury Park because of Bruce Springsteen, of course. And I was just digging through like the used sec A section in there, the vinyl. And this, I just jumped out. I mean, I obviously I instantly recognized this photograph here of the boardwalk. Um, and it was three dollars, and I just was like, "What the hell, man? It's such a weird thing, you know." I just, I never, I don't know what this record is. I don't know. I look, you know, at the tracks here. The none of them ring a bell at all, and I don't think even any of the people who are in the bands really ring a bell, you know, like, oh, there's whoever, uh, they went on to whatever. There's all these liner notes here on the back here, which I haven't read. A lot of it's talking about Bruce Springsteen and, you know, there's, you know, I mean, there's a, a sound to as the as music that came out of Asbury Park, like uh, Southside Johnny um, and Little Steven and stuff, and certainly Springsteen, obviously, with those kind of horns and stuff, like those rock songs with those horns. Uh, maybe with like a little R&B influence to it. I, I mean, I guess that's probably the best way you can maybe sum up the sound of uh, as what people refer to as the Asbury Park sound. I mean, I'll probably read these liner, liner notes and they'll be the exact opposite. But, uh, but anyways, I'm guessing these are just a bunch of local bands that were playing around in Asbury Park, you know, with the Stone Pony. Um, but it'd be interesting. Vinny Lopez, I see his picture on here. I know he's from... Uh, Bruce, he ended up playing with Bruce Springsteen, but uh, you know, it was just, this is like a curiosity. I, I have no idea how this is going to be or anything. Oh, there's no sleeve off the head one. Looks like it's in good condition on Visa Records. From 1988, we get R.E.M. and Green. I just had to go check my door. Some drunk lady here in the hotel was trying to get into my room thinking it was her room. She's across the hall. Ah, uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> so anyways, um, so R.E.M. So this is, I mentioned, I was looking for like two or three specific records. This was one of them, R.E.M. Vinyl uh, Green. Um, I had the CD, I bought the CD when it came out. Um, that's like right when I really got into R.E.M. You know, I knew them before that. I'd seen, um, you know, uh, like one or two videos before that and heard them on like our college rock radio station. Uh, but when the green came out, I really, uh, really loved Orange Crush, the song, and bought it, then bought Eponymous right after that. And Eponymous I picked up on vinyl probably like a year ago. Um, and I kind of was like, eh, you know, if I'm going to have any REM on vinyl, Eponymous for me kind of covers everything. So I felt like that was enough. Um, and then recently I saw somebody was talking about Green and I was like, I was like, you know what, I think that'd be, that'd be a cool one to have on vinyl too. I really like this album a lot. Um, and the thing is, you know, I don't know if you're aware of it, I don't think it's any big secret, but you know, it's like the album's green and the cover's orange. But if you stare at this cover, you know, just like not blinking for a minute or two or whatever, and then when you like look to the wall, you'll see this album cover, you know, how you do that with, uh, but you'll see it, but it, the orange is like the opposite of green. So you'll like look at the wall and you'll see the image of this album cover, but it'll be green, uh, which is kind of weird. I never knew that until a couple, maybe just pretty recently, maybe two some odd years ago, I, somebody mentioned that and I was like, oh, damn. And then I tried it and it worked. <laughs> 
Anyway, so this is REM. This is their jump from indie IRS to the big leagues. Warners, their first release on Warners. Um, it was a very popular, very uh, popular album when it came out. Um, and it's really good. I love this album. I think it's a fantastic record. I just always loved it, and I'm just happy to have this on vinyl. Like, I walked into um, Zia, and I'm just kind of like getting the lay of the land. Like, where is everything? You know, because it's all spread out, and just there's so much stuff. And and then I saw like a little bin that said like, um, uh, you know, used. Like, I guess it was maybe like new arrivals of like used records. And I like walked around it, and then this was like right there, like in the bin, like right in the front. I didn't even have to dig for it where it was, and I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna pick that up. But uh, some great tunes on here. Pop Song 89 was really popular. World Leader Pretend, Stand, You Are to Everything, Turn You Inside Out, I Remember California. Again, glad to pick this one up. It was 20 bucks, which, you know, pretty good for this. This is a reissue, this isn't, this isn't one of the original ones from 88. Um, this, I guess, maybe was put out in 2013, 180 gram vinyl, you know, really good, excellent condition. 20 bucks, I think, is pretty good. I think brand new, I see this going for probably twice that. Um, so those are all my pickups from Zia Records. Like I said, if you're in Vegas, definitely go check them out. Either location, I'm sure the other one that I didn't visit is just as good as the one that I did. And uh, by all means, some of these, especially, you know, Beautiful South, Bodines, I'd love to hear, uh, you know, your suggestions of tracks that you really dig on there, if you're familiar with the records. I'm going to go eat my free lollipop from Heights. And by all means, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.